We are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our fourth and final segment today, which is going to be recapping some more minor news around the league, just some minor stories that I did want to touch upon. Uh, we usually do this at the end of the show if there are a lot of transactions that happened that I think were notable. So, yeah. So the first one I did want to talk about was, of course, one of the biggest stories of the entire baseball year. But I've already made a few segments on it. And again, as I said before, it's more of a legal situation than a baseball situation. To me, it's more it's a legal situation that happens to have a baseball player in the center of it. So I didn't really want to make a full segment on it, but I did want to give an update. So as of now, you can probably imagine that I am talking about the Shohei Otani, Ipe Muzahara situation. Muzahara, of course, um, his former translator for the Dodgers for a short time and for the Angels for a long time. Very good friends as well. So we have an update on the situation now. So the full update is that Muzahara is pleading guilty to a bunch of fraud charges, uh, according to the feds. Apparently, according to them, he he scammed Otani out of $16 million for sports betting, which is just unfathomable. Apparently, some of the answers we have had before about this situation have been answered, which is, is Otani a scape? Is he um, using Ipe as a scapegoat? Is he involved? Is he completely a victim? And the answer is he is completely a victim, according to the FBI. Uh, there was no record at all of him doing anything illegal. He was um, victim A in this indictment and this case. So, obviously, Otani is completely cleared, as it looks like now, from the FBI that he was not in the wrongdoing. He was a full victim, and Muzahara was a con man who scammed him out of a lot of money. Um, allegedly, I want to say this all alleged. Um, actually, I don't know if it's alleged, actually. I'm just going to say that to make sure, but he is pleading guilty, as I believe, so that is what um, we know as of right now, that he is in, uh, we knew he was in talks to plead guilty, and the user apparently the charges and all that, so, yeah, um, it's definitely um, a really sad situation seeing these two guys who are really, really good friends over the years be broken up like this over a legal situation where someone used the other one um, for own personal gain and, you know, kind of being a con man and just, it really, it really is sad. Um, Otani seems like a very nice guy, seems like one of the better guys in baseball, keeps his head down, doesn't really care about this kind of stuff, and then it happens to him. So it just is an unfortunate situation that Otani's really great friend and uh, co-worker was able to take advantage of him like this. One of the big questions I had about the case was how do you not notice $4 million being taken away from your bank account? And now we know it was all actually $16 million, so how do you not notice that? From what we know, Muzahara um, changed the settings in his bank account to not give him notifications when money was taken out. And when he called the banks to take out loans, he pretended to be Otani. So that is how we... Um, that is how he... could. Um, got the money out of it without alerting Otani. So, yeah, this is definitely a really sad situation all around. It's just a really unfortunate one that kind of puts a damper over baseball and a damper over what was supposed to be a great start in Los Angeles for Shohei Otani. So, yeah, it is unfortunate, but, you know, there's always always big sports stories. So, yeah. Going to some more uh, regular baseball news now, and it's kind of, I guess, happier news because that was kind of depressing. First, we have Brandon Lau. He will be placed on the injured list by the Rays for 10 days. Now, not a huge deal as it's only 10 days, but of course, there is always the chance that his injury gets developed more and he gets hurt more. The Rays right now are kind of just mediocre, and they're not really doing as well as I think the Rays can because they they are the Rays. They know what they're doing. They're a great organization. So I think having one of your starters go on the injured list is unfortunate and not something you want right now. Again, it's only 10 days. The injury, yeah, it doesn't seem to be that big. So, um, yeah, um, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. He has a right oblique strain, which is what I was trying to look for. So oblique strains are never good, but I also don't think they're something that is going to really developed into something major further. So that is the situation there with Lau and the Rays. It is interesting now, could they call up Junior Camarino, one of the top prospects in baseball, to fill in for Lau's position at second base? I would. I would have had him on the OMB roster anyways, but they know more about him than me. So we'll definitely see what has to happen there with Camarino and the Rays. But I think this could open up a window for him to come up. I don't think he will, but I think there's a possibility because he does play second base 
and you would get full reps there. So yeah, that's going to be something interesting to watch and interesting to see. But just going to going to be um, you know, interesting to watch how I keep saying interesting, I apologize, but this this stuff is interesting to see how Lau's injury does affect the Rays and their lineup and just them being kind of mediocre right now. So yeah, that is something I do want to see and want to um, see how it does affect the Rays as the season does go on. Some other second base news. We have Colton Wong agreeing to a contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks for a minor league deal. I think this is a good depth of the Diamondbacks. You know, you've lost a lot at your shortstop position, losing Jordan Lawler, then losing his backup, Geraldo Perdomo. Now, of course, Wong isn't a shortstop. He is a second baseman, but he is middle infield depth. And with one of your youngsters, Blaze Alexander, going over to play shortstop for most likely the majority of the year now until Perdomo and Lawler are back not hurt he probably is going to play short and you now have Wong who can potentially fill in at second fill in a third maybe even at short if you really get desperate but I just overall think it is a good veteran depth signing because you know you have lost so much and I think Wong showed a little bit with the Dodgers last year I don't think as much left with the bat but knows how to take fine at bats is a really good defender bring good veteran leadership so overall I think it's a really nice signing by the Dimebacks I think it makes a lot of sense for where they are with their team right now and just overall is a good move by them. Jefferson Cuero, one of the top prospects in baseball, one of the top Brewers prospects, is out for the year. He is having season-ending surgery. Now, not a huge blow to the Brewers, as I don't really think Cuero was on the um, uh, way to going to the big leagues this year. I didn't think that he was going to help the, Blue Je- help the Brewers this year immediately. So I don't think, again, it's something that affects them now, but it is, is it going to be something to watch in the future to see if this injury does affect him starting next year, going into the future. You know, he is a really good catcher prospect. He's a guy I'm really watching for the future. It's going to be fun to see how his career develops. And with this bro- young Brewers core of a lot of great hitters, a lot of great players in general, I think Cuero is one of the guys they are watching. So, yeah, it's going to be something to watch now to see how his career does unfold and how this injury does affect him. I don't think it should be that big of a deal, but at the same time, crazier things have happened. So whenever a top prospect does get hurt and does uh, remain out for the year, it is something to watch. And we'll see what happens with Cuero next year and seeing if he does make the major leagues. I think once he does come up, he'll be the Brewers' starting catcher. You'll probably move William Contreras to DH or even you can get a little more fancy and move him to a different position. I think Atreus is a great hitter, a really elite hitter, but I just don't think he's a catcher long term. So I think Cuero provides some stability at that position once he does come up and you can move Contreras to full time DH, maybe even first base or somewhere else, but you know, so you have the flexibility there. And hey, if you think Contreras is a full time catcher, you can keep him there. You can trade Cuero for something else that you think is more valuable. So it's gonna be inter- it's gonna be interesting to watch and something to see as the seasons do go on and as their, both their careers do develop. Kyle Bradish is going to be starting a rehab assignment with the Baltimore Orioles very, very soon. He had a shoulder injury in, the, in spring training and has not pitched this year. This is great news in my opinion for the Orioles. Bradish is easily their second best pitcher. Had a breakout season last year. It was really, really good. You know, you bring him back into the rotation at full health and he pitches like you think he can. You'll have him Corbin Burns, Grayson Rodriguez, some of the other veteran guys, uh, not veteran guys, some of the old, other younger guys that have performed really well, like Dean Kramer, like John Means, in that rotation, and you suddenly become a force. I think a top three of Burns, Radish, and Grayson Rodriguez can go up against anyone in the playoffs. You have the prospect capital to add someone else to that rotation. Maybe Jesus Cesardo, a guy I think is pretty clearly going to be traded at the trade deadline. So, Yeah, definitely something to watch as Radish does recover from his rehab, does recover from his injury with this rehab assignment. I think it's going to be a big part of the Orioles this year and brings a lot of stability to that rotation and brings a lot of depth there. So yeah, definitely something I'm keeping my eyes on. Finally, we have Joan Moncada. It is announced that he is out for three to six weeks after falling on his way to first base. Just a super unfortunate injury. I mean, he was, it was, he was literally running to first base and just fell and kind of blew out his legs. So just something that is super sad. Moncada's in the last year of his contract. It looks like the writing's on the wall for him not to return to Chicago and the south side. He, you know, had a very interesting career with the White Sox. 
didn't really live up to that full prospect potential after coming over in that huge Chris Sale trade. Dealt with a lot of injuries, had some months of being really good, was just overall a streaky player with the White Sox. So, yeah, something unfortunate that did happen. And um, just something, you know, it just is unfortunate and sad that he didn't live up to his full potential with Chicago. And wasn't really a bust, in my opinion, because it wasn't really his fault. He just dealt with a lot of freak injuries and a lot of things that weren't under his control. But definitely did not live up to the name he had and definitely did not live up to the um, the reasons why he came over there and the allure he had as a top prospect coming over from Boston for an ace like Chris Sale. So, yeah, a sad situation, but that's baseball. These things happen, so, you know, it's kind of un- it's unfortunate, but it is what it is, unfortunately. So that was our segment four here, talking about some just some news stories around the league that I didn't want to touch upon, talking about Jahe Otani as an interpreter, Brandon Lau going on the injured list, Colton Wong signing with the Diamondbacks, Jefferson Cuero out for the year, Kyle Braddis starting a rehab assignment, and Yuan Makata out for three to six months. All interesting stuff. So, yeah, that was the end of our segment four and the end of our show today. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you can follow us anywhere. Uh, you can follow us anywhere on social media. Get content and updates: Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Um, you know, subs- make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit follow on all social media. As I said, uh, if you do subscribe on YouTube, please do as well. Um, you know, hit the notification bell. You get notified not only when I post, but when every single other great content creator on this channel does post. So it would mean a lot. It helps everyone here at the network, and it helps me as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. And we'll see you at Baseball Throw Dice tomorrow. Bye, guys. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit. And the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't want to go to...